rehabilitated and real entertaining. This is the Carl Jackson Podcast. All right, welcome to this edition of the Carl Jackson Show Podcast. I'm glad you could join me today. Please be sure to subscribe to my podcast at SalemPodcastNetwork.com, the Carl Jackson Show dot com. Follow me on social media wherever uh, I am on social media. The Carl Jackson Show. That is the Carl Jackson Show. And be sure to support our friends at My Pillow. Support Mike Lindell. He's a juggernaut when it comes to election integrity. And listen, American manufacturing, American jobs, buying American products. Don't forget, right now there's still a special going on. If you use my promo code Carl, you can go to mypillow.com. Click on that radio listener square. Use uh, again. Use my name Carl C A R L or give them a call 1-800-858-0263. You can still take advantage of the Giza Dream Sheets selling as low as $29.98, as well as the Percale uh, the Percale sheets as well, and also his three-piece towel set. So just use that promo code Carl and know that you're helping to fight for freedom. Know that you're helping to fight for election integrity. Know that you're helping to fight for American jobs. Now, let me get to the subject at hand, how church leaders became Fauci sheep. Man. I ran across this article in the Daily Wire. I was actually, man, I was, I went through a, a great, 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 great event. For any of you that are listening to this podcast, uh, if the Battleground Talkers Tour has not come to your town, make sure that you go. I was privileged and it was so fun uh, to attend with uh, with uh, my my colleagues, the American uh, American Adversaries and, uh, and Matt Buff with our uh, local team, but also with the big wigs, the big names, Dennis Prager, Mike Gallagher, Dr. Gorka. I mean, these guys are just uh, doing amazing work. And I love what Salem, uh, the Salem Media Group is doing by having this gentleman fly all across the country to different battleground states and offering their opinions and getting the base excited to vote because this election is the most important election, certainly of my lifetime. And we say that with every election cycle. And I think that's true. Uh, frankly, with every election cycle, I think that's been true ever since the Obama administration, no doubt, uh, at least in my uh, at least in my opinion. But I think this I mean, this is this is for all the cards. This election is for all the cards. So if you get an opportunity to go to one of these events, please go uh, battlegroundtour.com, battlegroundtour.com, battlegroundtour.com. Well worth it. Again, we had Dr. Gorka, uh, Dennis Prager and Mike Gallagher. Uh, you might have the same three or you may have another three, another group of guys, but one of the or some of the national hosts. But if you get an opportunity to go, please go. Now, again, I was reading through all of this material, including some articles from Dennis Prager uh, this morning and, and just going through different resources search because I'm going to be on for the officer Tatum tonight. Uh, and I was having a hard time uh, figuring figuring out what to discuss for this podcast. And I was going to talk about social justice, which I am. I'm going to do a podcast exclusively on social justice and social justice being a sin. If you have a church that preaches social justice, run away from it. Uh, so we'll do a podcast strictly on that. But I ran into this article in the Daily Wire and I wanted to talk about it. How church leaders align with Fauci to discredit experts opposed to COVID mandates. Now, I'm titling this bad, bo bad boy, How Church Leaders Became Fauci Sheep. And I just want to go through it and I'm going to go through some biblical uh, principles some biblical values, because I think this is very important. We live in a Judeo-Christian society. So even if you're not a church goer, per uh, say, even if you're not overly religious or overtly religious, it's very important that we uh, that we conserve our Judeo-Christian heritage. How can we conserve it if we don't know it or if we don't know when it's being attacked? Uh, and that's what I think the COVID lockdowns did, right? The COVID lockdowns did. They uh, completely exposed the left. They also showed us how good Trump's policies were during uh, uh, during during his era. But I mean, it just showed us how hungry the left was to take away our freedoms and they, how they were willing to destroy people in order to promote this narrative that, uh, you know, COVID, 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 if you don't get the jab, you'll die. If you don't get the jab, you're a bad person, so on, et cetera. So Dr. J, uh, I, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name correctly, but I'd love to get this guy on the program. Tony, if you are out there listening, make sure you book this guy. All right, Dr. J Bhattacharya. Uh, he's a professor of medicine at Stanford, and he delivered a sermon. I didn't know this guy was a Christian. This guy's a Christian. He's a believer. 
All right. So in late February of 2020, he gave a sermon to his church or the church that he attends. He happens to be a deacon and an elder in a Presbyterian church in Silicon Valley. Dr. Jay Bacharya is. He's also the professor of medicine at Stanford. And he delivered a sermon. Um, and the theme was it uh, of it was clean and unclean. Now, before I go on and, and, and share this column with you and, and give you my takeaways from this column, I want to share a, a scripture verse. All right. Some of you might not be. Oh, my God. No. Uh, uh, listen, this isn't going to be a sermon per se. But again, Judeo Christian values. I happen to be a Christian. I think this is very, very important. Um, it says this. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. This is first John uh, chapter four, verse one. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Let me read that again. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Now, I'm one of these people. I hate when people use uh, scripture out of context. So I, I'm reading from the Ryrie Study Bible. I love it. It's an NASB version, but it puts everything in context. It puts the Bible in context so that I don't use it out of context, even when I'm tempted to do so to try to make a point. I'm human. All right. But this under in its proper context, uh, it, it's it, the proper context is this cautions of fellowship concerning false lying spirits. All right. So I just want you to understand where we're going here. So Dr. J. Bhattachara, uh, uh, he spoke of Christ's revolutionary compassion in this uh, in this sermon uh, in physically touching lepers and other disease outcasts of the ancient world. He paused to reflect on how our society, in which 64 percent of the population professes to follow Jesus, conducted itself over the last two years, given the COVID lockdowns. Now, I like perhaps many of you uh, that are listening to this podcast and may be a person of faith, maybe a Christian, maybe a Catholic, maybe, you know, uh, you're, you're listening to this and you're like, man, no, no, no crap, Crimlock. I mean, this was obvious, right? What they were doing with the lockdowns were obvious, but it wasn't so obvious to many, uh, to many people of faith. It wasn't so obvious and it was very disconcerting to me. I didn't get it. Now, perhaps it's because I'm immersed in the politics uh, you know, daily here. And, 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 and then also as a Christian, I try to, um, listen, I, 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 by the grace of God, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Christian, right? Because of, because of his mercy, but I want to understand the Bible. I wonder, I want to understand its principles. I want to get closer to Jesus, right? Uh, so I, I, I look at the world through a biblical lens and I look at the blessings that God has bestowed upon America. And I feel like as a Christian, we have an obligation to conserve uh, our Judeo-Christian values in America because our Judeo-Christian values, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution has made America exceptional, right? Above all other nations, not that we're better people, but yes, we do have a better system and we shouldn't be ashamed to talk about it. But again, you have Dr. Uh, Jay Bachara, uh, uh, Bhattachara, Talking about, listen, we have 64% of the population professes to be followers of Jesus, yet, yet we were completely duped. This is what uh, Bhattachara uh, wrote about his fellow doctors and nurses. He said that he started receiving emails almost immediately after the pandemic started from doctors and nurses that were asking, uh, asking him if it was OK to hug their wives and their husbands. Now, these are doctors and nurses, right? These are people that are trained experts when it comes to the medical profession. He said, because they worked in the hospital, they were unclean, right? Your COVID patients, you know, he's talking about how they were, how, how they were feeling. Hey, they're COVID patients. They were unclean. So these people, and understandably so, listen, I know that they're medical and health professionals, but when this thing first hit, none of us knew what to expect, right? And none, none of us knew how things were going to go down. We were we were we saw those videos in China, the lockdowns. And we're like, oh, my God, if that comes here, you know, we're going to there's going to be dead people all over the streets. It's going to be completely insane. And perhaps these doctors and understand I have some grace for some doctors, but I don't have a hell of a lot of grace anymore. Or mercy for doctors that continue to promote this nonsense, this COVID nonsense, lockdowns, masks, jabs, uh, doctors that continue to promote that stuff. 
uh, run away from them. They are not doing society. In my opinion, they're not doing society any good anymore. These are freaking robots. They happen to be smart, but they're robots. Now, a lot of doctors just simply don't have enough time now to dig into the lot, a lot of the research. So they just listen to their administrators, whatever the CDC, NIH, the federal government hands down in order for these hospitals co- to continue getting federal funding. These doctors just obey orders from the administrators and the administrators are obeying orders from the federal government. All right. Uh, So unfortunately, that's how it works oftentimes. And there's not a lot of courage out there from many in the medical profession to buck the the status quo. Dr. Bhattacharya is an exception to that. All right. So he says we knew early on that COVID was unlikely to spread outdoors. Yet he just like uh, just like those of us, we witnessed people outdoors. I mean, I live in Florida. And guys, it was so freaking crazy. I'm I'm telling you in the middle of the summer and it gets hot in Florida, not just hot. It gets humid. I mean, you step out of the shower uh, and if you're not in AC or if your AC isn't kicked down, you're going to be sweating. All right. And I already I already sweat profusely. So I hate sweating. But I sweat, especially living in Florida, man, you get dressed up, you, you know, put on some clothes, go outside and you are just, oh, it, it can get hot and sticky. That's, <laughs> that's just the way it is in Florida. But we have freedom here. We have nice beaches, beaches nice people for the most part. Uh, so it's an enjoyable place to live. But he talked about witnessing people covering their face outdoors, knowing that this was a complete and utter lie. He describes seeing pedestrians swerve wide to avoid an unmasked person on the sidewalk. Uh, though it was known early on that the, the, the coronavirus was likely to, to, to not spread outdoors. Then he asked the congregation, when someone comes down with COVID, what's the first question we all ask? And he says, he responds, he answers his own, his own question. Where did you get it? Who gave it to you? In other words, he says, we treat contracting the virus as a sin, as punishment for not being careful and not doing all the right things. And didn't we feel that way? Didn't the Fauci's of the world, uh, those that bought into the lockdown nonsense, didn't they make us feel that way? If you didn't get the jet, oh, you're dirty, you're unclean, you're a sinner. I mean, we heard it from people on media, even from sports media all over the place. It was insane. Well, what is Bhattacharya's point? Throughout the pandemic, Americans were treated or treated one another as if they were unclean. And I think it was a lot of virtue signaling for the left from the left. This is what you have to understand. It's always funny to me how the left tries to avoid uh, uh, um, Christianity or or people of faith or or talk down people of faith. Yet they go out and try to find their own religions. They go out and try to find their own uh, morality, if you will, because everybody needs God. Everybody was created for a purpose. So everyone is always searching for God. Everyone wants to feel moral. So instead of a lot of people. Instead of turning to God, they look within themselves to feel moral. They find things that can become their religion, whether it's climate, whether it's the COVID jabs, whether it's mass. And they're like, this is my religion. You're sinning against my religion. That's why we need God. That's why we need a neutral arbiter of truth, a neutral arbiter of of objective truth. But the left doesn't want to bow down to the Lord, if you will. Uh, And so they bow down to all these other gods, these other religions, such as the religion of Fauci and mask and COVID jabs and so on, etc. Bhattacharya went on to rise in prominence after he created the Great Barrington Declaration. He and a bunch of colleagues uh, from Harvard and Oxford, released the Great Barrington, uh, Barrington Declaration in October of 2020. And for those of you that don't know, you can, you may still be able to find it online. An open letter that opposed, you can if you go to conservative sites, uh, an open letter that opposed pandemic policies like the lockdowns and instead advocated for focused protection for, uh, for the most vulnerable. And that makes sense, right? Uh, since then, he has uh, he has spoken out against masks and vaccine mandates as well. But remember what happened in New York with Andrew Cuomo. Andrew Cuomo murdered. Uh, essentially, I mean, uh, it, it may be w- murdered is uh, too strong of a word, but he, he he obviously killed and covered up what happened in the nursing homes and in, uh, in, in New York, where he literally sent elderly patients that had COVID back to nursery homes, which were which were the elderly were our most vulnerable, most vulnerable. And as a result, a lot of elderly people died because uh, Andrew Cuomo, former governor of New York, was forcing these nursing homes to take uh, to take in COVID patients. 
And at the time uh, when COVID first hit, I mean, it was it was absolutely devastating. Right. We we were trying to get a hold of this thing. We didn't know exactly what was going on, didn't know exactly how to treat it. And then when doctors started to emerge that uh, they, they found some simple solutions. I remember these doctors in Bake, uh, Bakersfield, they said they've been treating people with COVID. I mean, pretty early on, at least in that summer, they were doing some just some basic medications, some treatments that they had, and they were seeing uh, positive effects and they were completely censored. They were silenced. Their videos taken off of YouTube, their Twitter accounts, all this kind of stuff. It was insane. But Bhattacharya is informed by a biblical worldview as well as a scientific worldview, and they can go hand in hand. And in fact, they do. I would argue that uh, that, that that science proves the Bible. <laughs> that would be my argument. Here's some history of Bhattacharya, and I've gained more respect from this uh, for this man uh, after reading this column. And it was I already had much respect for him because obviously he had to have courage to come on television to write the articles that he did uh, to work with the uh, 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 the the to produce the the Great Barrington Declaration. Uh, I mean, obviously a man of courage, but he was born to a Hindu family in Calcutta, India. Uh, he became a Christian at age 18 after uh, after he came to the U.S. for college. <clears throat> He's been a member of the First Pre uh, Presbyterian Church in Mountain View, California. And there he serves, as I stated er earlier, as a deacon and an elder. He's been there for 27 years. Here's what's going to surprise you, and here's what surprised me. There's another famous Christian scientist, and that's in this story. You guys heard of a name by a guy by the name of Francis Collins? Yes, Francis Collins is the former NIH director. Francis Collins is also a famous scientist and a Christian. Did you know that? I didn't know that. And I got to be honest with you, I would have never guessed that in a million years. I would have never guessed that in a million years. God, this is unbelievable. The article goes on to say, perhaps if they had known this, fewer prominent evangelical pastors... Um, uh, theologians and seminary heads would have been willing, so willing to follow the lead of a, 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 a Francis Collins, another famous Christian a, a scientist doctor. They're saying that if more of these theologians, because what I'm going to get to are these church leaders that bowed down to Fauci. So what this article is saying is that maybe if these leaders had known Bhattacharya's own testimony, his history, perhaps they wouldn't have been so quick to buy into Francis Collins nonsense because Francis Collins is a Christian and he's a scientist. So we're going to believe him rather than the outliers or, you know, like Bhattacharya, uh, Bhattacharya. So it's absolutely insane. So uh, what Francis Collins did is he labeled medical opinions like Bhattacharya and those that believed like him that uh, you know, in, in not masking and lockdowns and all that kind of stuff and a more focused approach to COVID. He would call them fringe. He would call them conspiracy theorists. And because of the relationships that he had with Christian organizations, a lot of people got the shot. And this is how they would even manipulate scripture. This is why I was so frustrated. I'm thankful to attend a church that did not shut down uh, during the pandemic. I think for a week, um, I think for a week or two, I think uh, we may have shut down and done services online just because there was some local ordinance or some uh, whatever at the time. And then after that, you know, my pastor was like, listen, you know, we're people of faith. We're not going to live by fear. We are, you know, we, we are going to church. If more evidence emerges that there's not treatment or that people could die, so on, et cetera, but we are not going to live by faith. We, and we continue to go, we, we continue to go to church. All right. I mean, open buildings and all. And it was a slow trickle back effect where people were coming back slowly, um, you know, but uh, it, 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 it took some time. But many people came back right away. Many people came back a week or two, you know, whatever. I don't even think it was two weeks, honestly. I think we maybe missed a week or whatever. And the pastor was like, hey, I'm done with this crap. <laughs> so thank, I'm thankful for having a strong leaders at the church that uh, uh, that, uh, that that I attend, no doubt. But here's. OK, so here's where the manipulation starts. Going back to this article uh, from the from the beginning of the pandemic, college uh, Collins, uh, Francis Collins, former NIH director, uh, leveraged his relationships with church leaders. People like uh, uh, Rick Warren, uh, the, uh, the, the author of The Pastor uh, Driven Life, used to uh, be the uh, senior pastor at Saddleback Community Church in California and apologist Tim Keller. Uh, to convince Christians across the nation that submitting to lockdowns and mandates was a matter of obedience to God. Now, I do have to question these brothers and sisters in the Lord. Uh, did they ever see, especially in California, that Gavin Newsom was shutting down 
uh, churches while he was uh, while, while he was allowing booby clubs to keep operating. I'm like, did you guys did you guys ever read that news? I, I, I mean, it's just insane to me. Uh, but nonetheless, these were Christians that they thought they were doing good for the community and their churches. They were absolutely due. Collins and his personal friends, uh, Christianity Today, theologian Russell Moore and uh, Billy Graham Center director. Now, not not Franklin Graham, all right, but the Billy Graham Center director, Ed Stetzer, also argued that Christians had a responsibility to tamp down on, quote, conspiracy theories, close quote, like the notion that the virus leaked from a Wuhan lab or that masks were ineffective. Now, this goes back to the scripture, in my opinion, test the spirits. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because uh, because many false uh, prophets have gone out into the world. Now, see me, a person that dives into politics every day, I'm like, OK, what the left is constantly trying to do is overtake God or undermine God with government. Uh, so I'm going to be a little more cautious with obeying the government. And I, this is I, I think this is the issue with Christians that refuse to get involved in politics. Oh, we're going to you know, we're going to worship God and we're going to spread the gospel. We're going to stay in our four walls and we're going to do our thing here. But politics, that is not our thing. Christians aren't called to politics. So it, you got to be crazy to say that if you if you don't understand our Constitution and the freedoms that we have and the reason that we have free speech and the reason that you're able to worship freely inside of the United States, at least so far. And actually, that has come under attack uh, after COVID, if you don't understand the blessing that you have as a Christian or as a person of faith living inside of the United States, you're just crazy. You're uninformed. You're a low information voter. You're a low information voter. Now, that isn't to say that politics goes before Christianity. Of course not. I don't want to be struck dead here. I'm a Christian first, Christian conservative American that happens to be black, right? I want to go to heaven uh, first and foremost. I want to secure my relationship with Jesus Christ. That does not mean that we don't get involved in issues on, on, on this earth. As a matter of fact, we're called to be soft and light to a dark world. Romans 13. Let me just let, let, let me let me just read this. Actually, let me finish this part. Uh, so the Billy Graham Center director, Ed Setzer, also argued that Christians had a responsibility to tamp down on, quote, conspiracy theories like the notion that the virus leaked. OK, I did already read that. So forgive me here. Let me just read this quick part uh, to you. Romans 13. Uh, this is this is what I often tell people. Well, you know what? Why should why should Christians play a part in government or shouldn't Christians just obey whatever whatever government says? Now, this is this is why many Christians believe this. Many people of faith believe this. All right. Uh, whether it's Catholics, Jews, I, I, I think it's why so many of us are, are so many in the faith become um kind of liberal. But it says here in, in, in relation to government, this is Romans 13. I'm sure you're familiar with this, but it says every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities for there is no authority except uh, from God and those which exist are established by God. So you're sitting there saying, all right, Carl, you, well, you just read that. Well, if our our authorities, if, if, if we're subject to the governing laws, basically of the land, then why aren't you listening to the authorities of the land? All right. Let me go on before I answer that. Therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God and they who have oppo uh, they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Do you want to have no fear of authority? Do what is good and you will have praise from the same for it is a minister of God to you for good. But if you do what is evil, be afraid for it does not bear the sword for nothing for it is a minister of God an avenger who brings wrath on the one who practices evil. Therefore it is necessary to be in subjection, not only because of wrath, but also for consciousness sake. All right. Now here's the deal. What is our governing authority inside of the United States? The constitution the Constitution. That's why it's very important for Christians to understand the Constitution, for Jews to understand the Constitution. For all of my people in the faith to understand the Constitution. Because we're not living by, we're not living in these, the, 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 these times. This is a message the Bible transcends generations after generation after generation but in relation to our government here in the United States, we are to abide by the laws underneath the Constitution. We do have certain rights under the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. All right. It seems to me that the problem the church gets into 
is without noticing it, perhaps, and I'm not so sure about this. Maybe I'm giving uh, the church too much credit. I think we, I think we want to, I think we want approval from the world. I think that's what it comes down to. I think that's the whole problem that uh, that's the problem that I have with the the black church, the black Christian church, which I believe is completely ineffective in the United States of America. You know, I I, I hate to say it, but send all your emails to Gabe. But I just think the black Christian church is, <laughs> is so ineffective. Uh, and it's sad because I, I, and that's not to say all black Christians are obviously and there are some black churches that are. But I have a problem with one. Uh, churches being 90% of anything, because it proves to me that the only people that you're sharing the gospel with are people that look like you because you want this certain comfort factor. And I don't think that's a good thing. And when Black Lives Matter can come in and uh, can come into the church and just rush in this cultural Marxism and uh, race identity politics and you don't say anything and you kind of embrace it, there's a problem. All right. Now, let me go back to Collins here before I get too far off track. All right. So Collins founded this BioLogos. It's a company uh, that he founded uh, in 2007, and he created it to create a bridge between scientists and Christians. All right. The article goes on to say. So BioLogos, an organization, again, Collins founded in 2007, bridging the gap between scientists and Christians, revealed further spiritual manipulation to discredit medical experts like Bhattacharya, who disputed the establishment narrative. Let me read that again. Francis Collins founded an organization called uh, 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 um, BioLogos, in 2007, to create bridges between scientists and Christians. But what we've learned is that he did so to further, sp- uh, sp- uh, 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 he used it for further spiritual manipulation to discredit medical experts like Bhattacharya who disputed the narrative. <clears throat> now, Bhattacharya, no, actually, it says here, title, Love Your Neighbor, Get the Shot. It was published in late August of 2020 as Bhattacharya. Oh, this was what Francis Collins, pu- guys, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm kind of reading through this stuff. I want to make sure that I get this right. Let me just read this part. All right. Uh, there was a public statement that was unearthed on social media last week from BioLogos. This is an organization, again, Collins founded, Collins founded in 2007 to create bridges between scientists and Christians. Uh, it reveals further. Uh, uh, spiritual manipulation to discredit medical experts like Bhattacharya who disputed the establishment narrative titled Love Your Neighbor, Get the Shot, close quote. It was published in late August 2020 as Bhattacharya was publishing widely circulated op-eds and outlets like the Wall Street Journal and sitting down for interviews warning that COVID risks were being inflated and lockdowns actually harms, lockdown harms were being minimized. Um, the signatories, which included celebrated theologian N.T. Wright, best-selling Christian authors Philip Yancey and Lisa Sharon Harper, Christianity Today CEO Tab, uh, Timothy uh, Dalrymple, and several sem- uh, seminary presidents, promised to, quote, actively promote accurate scientific and public health information from trustworthy, listen to this word, consensus, or these words, consensus sources, close quote. They also promised to counter, quote, misinformation, close quote, and conspiracy theories, quote unquote, from uh, non consensus, quote unquote, sources wherever they found them. Man, the church was in on the game. You know, uh, this is scary. Pastors like Jack Hibbs have spoken out against this. I mean, he was completely bewildered. Like, what the heck is happening with the church? Grace Community. A uh, 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 church, good, oh, good Lord, I forget his, uh, uh, Pastor John MacArthur. I mean, just uh, just like, what the heck is going on with Christians? Um, here's a quote from, from some Christians that were duped by Fauci. When Dr. Fauci, the nation's leading infectious disease experts, tell us uh, what scientists have learned about this infectious disease, and I'm quoting here, the Christian intelligentsia exhorted their followers, he should be listened to, quote unquote. He should be listened to. Now, who shouldn't be listened to is the question, because they also promoted that. Scientists outside the consensus, quote unquote, who were only providing one person's theory on YouTube, quote unquote. So this is the church. This is the these are our church leaders. In other words, scientists like Bhattacharya 
and his fellow medical dissidents shouldn't be listened to. The church, along with Fauci, along with Collins of the NIH, was promoting this nonsense that that these people shouldn't be listened to. Man, it's really it's really scary. In the closing section of "Love Your Neighbor" neighbor statement, <clears throat> and that's what uh, I guess that's the uh, the thing that BioLogos developed the "Love Your Neighbor" statement. The signers pledge that because of uh, quote because of their faith in Jesus Christ, close quote, they would listen to this. And I'm quoting all of these: wear mask because mask rulers rules are not experts talking or taking away our freedom, but an opportunity to follow Jesus' Jesus's command to love our neighbors as ourselves. That's how they excuse their own ignorance. Get vaccinated, close quote, because, and I'm quoting, vaccination is a provision from God and the vaccines are safe and effective, close quote. Uh, this is this is fascinating to me. I even heard uh, the doctor. I forget. I mean, not the doctor, the pastor. Uh, and, and I have no beef with him. He's a good pastor, conservative uh, pastor. He comes on Fox News regularly. I think it's uh, Pastor, uh, pastor Jeffries. But I heard him giving a response on Fox News one time where he was talking about how Christians can feel OK about taking the jab. And I, I was like, "You are you kidding me? Are you kidding? <laughs> uh, uh, unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. Here's another one <clears throat> on the love your neighbor statement. Correct men, I'm quoting, correct misinformation and conspiracy theories when we encounter them in our social media and communities. Uh, close quote. This is something that they need to do. Um, Christians are called to love the truth. We should not be swayed by falsehoods. Yet they were because they didn't do them any other research. They just trusted the quote unquote experts. And they assume that the people, the Collins of the world, and I can understand this to a, uh, to a degree, but pretty soon you should probably start doing your own research. Start figuring this stuff out, especially when they're telling you that you got to shut down your church while the nudie bar down the street and the bar where people are getting drunk down the street, you know, the people that you minister to are able to keep partying and you can't help participate or you can't participate in helping to change their lives because you're shut down. But the establishments that ruin their lives are open. Pastors, you got to come on, man. Common sense. Common sense. Don't be so, what's that statement? Don't be so uh, uh, heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. This is freaking common sense. More than 8,000 people, many of whom were pastors and ministry leaders, promised to work against evidence and arguments Bhattacharya and his great Barrington colleagues were presenting in order to promote Collins and Fauci's policies. Here's a great quote from National Review's Michael Brandon Doherty, who said, the signers were basically saying, we need to treat the church as a mission field for the establishment, not for individuals, not for people, but for the establishment. And we all know what NIH uh, 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 or the emails or maybe not all of us, but Francis Collins in emails to Fauci said he wanted swift and devastating takedown of these people like Bhattacharya that were publishing these uh, uh, publishing the Great Barrington Declaration where they were like, listen, focused approach. Let's take care of the elderly. Let's take care of the sick. Let's take care of those that are most likely to be devastated by COVID. Let's go that route. Man. So instead of practicing real science and uh, and debate, science is not a consensus. There, when you get more data uh, or when you get more evidence, you're you're in science. It's almost a continuum, right? You're learning more and more and more, but they're like, nope, this is the end. These masks work. These The lockdowns work. Uh, 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 um, what Lockdowns, masks, the jab, they all work, except they didn't. And yet these people continue uh, to, fall, uh, to fall prey. There was another victim, a guy. Well, actually, there were tons of victims in the medical industry uh, and still are to this day. I, I can tell you that there's some uh, hospitals around here that are still telling their doctors they got to wear masks. They're not unvaccinated. They got to wear masks. Still playing this game. Unbelievable. Dr. Kirk Malone uh, or Mil Mil Milwan, uh, M-I-L-H-O-A-N, a pediatric cardi cardiologist and pastor in Maui, had his medical license put under review for questioning the, the wisdom ed of administering vaccines to children. Man, here's something else. Uh, at the height of the frenzy to suppress misinformation, posters with Bhattacharya's picture were, were plastered around Stanford's campus alongside 
uh, Florida's COVID mortality numbers. Unbelievable. The implication was that because DeSantis, Governor DeSantis, uh, followed his advice to resist most restrictions, Bhattacharya had caused excessive deaths in the state. Uh, since then, age adjusted, uh, adjusted statistics have proved that Florida, in fact, came out in the middle of the pack behind states that implored more severe measures. And now, obviously, we have people moving here because of our freedom and because they realize the leaders in their states got it wrong. Uh, Bhattacharya's own faculty members turned against him. Um, there were petitions that were uh, that were drawn up against him, implying his divergent opinion that masks don't stop the disease from spreading was, quote, putting lives at risk, close quote, even as the CDC now acknowledges that he turned out to be correct. And actually, they did early on with the mask, believe it or not. But and then uh, Fauci will come on and say something different. So Bhattacharya... Uh, notices how this the lockdowns were so devastating to the poor. This uh, the guy that interviewed him said, when I asked Bhattacharya about efforts church leaders undertook to shut down debate, he answers from the perspective of both a doctor and a Christ follower. Follower, here's what he said, and I quote: Scientists and scientific leaders should allow debate to happen, not mess misrepresent the debate um, that the debate is already settled, and that essentially, uh, and then essentially trick Christian church. Uh, churches into following them. Well, they did dupe Christian leaders, but but I feel like a lot of Christian leaders were willing to be duped. And again, I think this goes back to a problem where the church is so willing or so desirous of being liked by the world. And the truth of the matter is, if you're going to follow Jesus, you're probably not going to be liked by the world. You're going to have to take some stands where people are just going to hate you even if you're doing it out of love. Now, you shouldn't be a jerk about your positions if you're a person of faith, obviously, but you should be able to explain, why does God love family? Why does God love traditional family? What is, why does God feel this way about abortion? I mean, he, he knew you before you were born. He could count the hairs on your head, so on, et cetera. You should be able to answer simple, basic questions, right? Simple, basic questions when it comes to our faith and, and giving account for the reasons we believe what we believe. This is insane about the jab to the idea that getting the shot, quote, uh, quote unquote, was synonymous with loving your neighbor. Um, Bhattacharya says it was always erroneous from a basic scientific perspective for a church to say that COVID vaccination is an act of love because you're protecting other people. It was like, it's just not factually correct. Now we know that the vaccines didn't even prevent transmission. But uh, 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 was it F Pfizer admitted it? A Pfizer director admitted it. And then he talked about this false argument that many pastors made and theologians that the official COVID policies reduced harm to the least of these, quote unquote, uh, which was also deeply flawed, uh, flawed, meaning the poor. But that's not the case. Bhattacharya goes on to say the lockdowns essentially were a policy that privileged the rich laptop class. All right. The biological statement had it had it exactly backwards. It was a policy pushed by Francis Collins that destroyed the poor, destroyed the vulnerable, destroyed the working class. To Bhattacharya's point, there was a U.N. report in March 2021 that est uh, that estimated 230,000 children had died from starvation in South Asia due to lockdowns. Due to lockdowns, not to the not to the covid disease, due to lockdowns. Here's a quote from Bhattacharya. There's millions of people who have starved as a consequence of economic dislocation caused by the lockdowns. And the World Bank issued reports suggesting that almost 100 million additional people were thrown into poverty due to loss of income. I mean, that's what I call trickle down epidemiology. The idea is you protect uh, you protect the rich and somehow that'll trickle down and help protect the poor. But in fact, it's the opposite. It devastated the poor. And that was deeply immoral man spot on this guy is spot on now as for francis collins he said look because uh he was frustrated with francis collins because just because francis collins has the authority and he continues to pray for him he says but just because he has the authority to issue some of these mandates that he did he shouldn't have done it he shouldn't have done it it's unbelievable man that we felt we fell for this stuff <clears throat> he says, Bhattacharya says he still admires Collins and he prays for him, uh, but he believes the former NIH director abused his position, both as a public health official and as a trusted Christian voice. Collins said, <clears throat> look, because I have this authority, not only can I render a verdict on science, but I can also use that verdict to guide the morality 
of the church and the moral teaching of the church. I think it's just an, a, a, an extraordinary position for one man to take on himself. Uh, what I think is, a, a, is extraordinary is for so many Christians and so many people of faith to be duped by it. That's what I think is extraordinary. It's unbelievable to me. Um, so anyway, guys, listen, I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Carl Jackson Show podcast. I, I Forgive me for a lot of reading through this column, but it was just, I, I'm telling you, I was out late with a battleground tour last night um, and reading through so much material this morning. But I wanted to bring you this information. I think it's very important. I think going forward, uh, if people of faith don't stand up, who else is going to stand up? Uh, you, you know, you, you know that. You know the saying, fall for, stand for something or fall for anything. Uh, that that it, it, The world, you have to understand this. The world needs the church. As much as the world or secularists will proclaim to hurt the church or hate the church, I should say, everyone endures pain in their life, whether that's physical or emotional pain. Everyone endures some type of pain. Everyone endures some type of hardship. So the very people that might hate the church will be the very people who in the end will look for open doors to the church so that they can go in to be healed, whether it's spiritually, emotionally, physically. The church should never, ever be a place that closes our doors. And for whatever reason, we allowed Fauci to dupe us, many of us, into closing our doors so that we could no longer help those that were underserved or help the needy, help those that were hurting. Pastors, I got to say, and church leaders, shame on you. 100 million more people that were placed into poverty as a result of COVID lockdowns. So instead of following one man that isn't named Jesus next time, do your freaking research, churches. All right, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. To this edition of the Carl Jackson Show podcast, please follow me everywhere podcasts are found. You can go to SalemPodcastNetwork.com, TheCarlJacksonShow.com. Please follow me on social media, The Carl Jackson Show. And also, please, please, please support my sponsors. Uh, guys, without sponsors, we simply cannot do this. So, MyPillow.com, use the promo code CARL. Use that promo code CARL, MyPillow.com. Click on the radio listener square. Uh, also, you can give them a call, 1-800-858-0263. Guys, Christmas is just around the corner. Do not wait a uh, long time uh, to get your to get your Christmas gifts. And you, they got plenty that you can buy uh, from MyPillow.com by using my promo code CARL, 1-800-858-0263 or MyPillow.com. Radio listener square. Take advantage of the deal. The Giza Dream Sheets. Uh, the the Percale bed sheets, the towels that were normally three piece set normally sells for forty nine ninety nine now nineteen ninety eight for you and also a plethora of other items that are available. Just use the promo code Carl and you'll get the uh, discounts available for those as well. All right, guys. Until next time, don't grow weary doing good. God bless you. <laughs>